And now, without any further delay, let's begin today's event, sponsored by CD Networks and hosted by U.S. Banker, BTN, and American Banker. I'd like to introduce your moderator for today, and that is Michael Sisk. Michael, you have the floor. Thanks, Tanya. And uh, I would like to welcome the audience once again. We thank you very much for being here with us today and sharing some of your day with us. We know your time is valuable, and we will honor that today with what I believe will be a very engaging 60 minutes of discussion. Once again, our topic today is how to reduce dropped trades and latency in emerging markets and increase revenue. My, I will be your moderator today. My name is Michael Sisk. I've been a New York-based journalist for about 15 years, and I have had stints as uh, investor editor Red Herring, editor at large at U.S. Banker, and a contributing editor of Bank Technology News. And my articles have appeared in a number of publications, including Barron's, Crane's New York Business, Institutional Investor, and Worth. I've co-written several books. The most recent was Merge Ahead, Mastering the Five Enduring Trends of Artful M&A. And we have a great pair of panelists today, and I would like to introduce both of them to you at this point. Uh, the first is Jeff Kim. He is Director, Banking Channels Advisory Service, and Chief Operating Officer at CD Networks Americas and Europe, Middle East, and Africa. Uh, Jeff is responsible for overall business operations. His responsibilities include leading sales, service, marketing, service, and support. He has championed the development of CD Network's web performance suite and positioning CD Networks as the trusted global advisor to enterprise companies with mission-critical applications. As a CDN industry veteran, Jeff brings extensive experience in sales, service, and marketing to the company's leadership team. Also on our panel today is Eric Nordahl. He is the Senior Vice President and Head of IT Operations at Saxo Bank. He is responsible for more than 200 IT specialists providing ownership, direction, and governance for all software and infrastructure. So um, those are our two panels today. Before we get going any further, just a, a little bit of housekeeping, uh, something I just want to reiterate a few things that Tanya said at the top of the hour. Uh, we do have Q&A at the end, about, usually about 10 minutes. Please uh, feel free as the spirit moves you to to, uh, to ping us any of the questions that occur to you. You don't have to wait until the end of the hour. You can do it whenever, whenever it, um, it occurs to you, so please do that uh, at your convenience. And then also, we do have two different polls today, and uh, if you could participate, that we would be grateful. The more, the merrier. It uh, makes the results all the, all the more significant for everyone, I think. And um, that is, okay, that's, the, that's the, all I have to say about that. But let me take us now to the first Whole, and it's a pretty straightforward question, and if everyone could weigh in, that would be great. Uh, it is, are you using a CDN service now? So um, it's uh, pretty straightforward, either a yes, a no, or a not yet but looking. So if everyone could weigh in on that, that would be great. And I will, I think probably we can probably close the poll. I imagine most people can answer that, that question pretty quickly. And it takes a, just a few minutes, or not a few minutes, about 20 seconds or so for the great big calculator behind your screen to calculate these, uh, these answers that you've given, and then we will share them with you. And once we get those results, I will turn things officially over to Eric, and he will lead us on his presentation. All right, so the results are that uh, about 60% or so are actually, are actually using a service now, and about a third aren't, and uh, uh, about 14% are not yet but are looking, actively looking. So those are interesting results and a good sort of grounding for the discussion we're going to have. And with that, let me turn things over to Eric. Eric, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Mike. And, uh, Thank you for letting me come here today and uh, tell you a little bit about Saxo Bank. Uh, the Saxo Bank is a fully EU regulated bank. I'll just go to the next slide here. Um, <clears throat> and we are a retail uh, client bank, which is focusing on a lot of different instrument types. And uh, I'm not going to really read all the stuff that says here on this. I mean, you can read yourself. But the real interesting thing is that 
we do focus very much on latency. And uh, we are also, as you can see here, very much into the FX business, which means that we need to be global and we have 170,000 FX trades a day. We have a daily turnover of 100 billion Danish krona, that is an equivalent of around 17 billion US. And we have clients in 190 countries. And again, it's a lot of network traffic. And again, the key element for us is always latency. And um, we have three products. Basically, we have uh, what we call the Saxo Trader, which is a rich client that are used by professional and semi-professional clients. We have also a web version and a mobile version. And one of the great features of this is that we actually allow people to trade directly on the prices that they see on the screen. And again, for that to be possible, we focus very much on latency. And um, having these three platforms and all these instruments basically, yeah, I'm, yeah, it, it's a it's a white label solution that we also have here, which means that it is not Saxo maybe that you know. It's actually other big banks that use our platform uh, underneath some of their own name, and. Uh, <clears throat> We are an international company in 25 countries. And when we then decided that we also wanted to go into China, we had to find some way of breaking the barrier of the Great Firewall of China. And we decided to go with uh, CD Networks as a, a partner in this. And uh, we have had some fairly large white label clients in China, and we had some difficulties in providing the service that we otherwise do around the world. And uh, C Networks has helped us to reduce latency in this area and uh, be able to give the same quality experience to our Chinese clients as we do to clients uh, throughout the world. So we have, we have had a lot of benefit from using C Networks in this, and we're looking into how we could expand the collaboration to further parts, uh, other parts of, of the world. And um, <clears throat> I think that basically concludes my little uh, speech on uh, how to uh, utilize CD networks and how to reduce latency in, in certain areas of the world. So uh, I think I'll turn the floor over again to you, Mike. Great. Thank you. Thanks, Eric. Um, and that brings us, as I promised, to our second polling question of the day. And this one is uh, one where you can, you don't have to pick one. You can pick uh, as many as apply to, uh, to your circumstance. What emerging markets are you looking to enter? And um, there are a number to choose from here. There's China, Russia, the Middle East. South America, Africa, the rest of Asia, other or none. Emerging markets are, are not of interest. So if you would please, everyone, chime in on those. Again, we can probably, I, I imagine at this point, we can close the poll. And um, once again, we will wait for a few moments to get the the results as things churn away back there. And uh, interesting, so we've got uh, a, a big percentage uh, interested in China, 43% uh, of the respondents interested in China, um, and uh, sort of smaller percentages interested in Russia. But uh, interesting. Uh, and I guess uh, let, me, let me turn it over to Jeff, and I don't know if you've got anything, any thoughts about those results, but it seemed interesting to me. Terrific. Hello, everyone. This is uh, Jeff Kim, Chief Operating Officer for uh, CD Networks. Again, thank you for spending, spending um, your day with us, uh, a brief moment of it. And really appreciate uh, Eric jumping on board and, uh, and, and uh, really have enjoyed working with Saxo Bank. Um, 
over the past uh, few months. Um, Saxo is probably one of the most technically savvy uh, group of engineers and operations uh, uh, group that uh, our team has worked with. And so it was a real pleasure um, partnering with them to, to solve some of the technical uh, uh, challenges as well as regulation and internet challenges uh, jointly with them. So I want to kind of give you a preview about that uh, and, and kind of give you a, a better case study into what, act what we actually did and, and the problem, the solution. Um, and specifically on this polling thing, we, we're, a lot of our business, um, although we're, we're, you know, we are experts at uh, accelerating Internet content all over the world, uh, right now is really focused on emerging markets. And, and I'm not surprised by these results. Of course, China is a huge growth market um, uh, out there. We're seeing a significant portion uh, of our business and our prospects and customers interested in China, um, but also shifting into, into areas like Brazil and Russia. Um, so uh, not, not too surprising there, but I will say that all the emerging markets are, are growing. So again, just to reiterate, how to reduce drop trades and latency in emerging markets and increase revenue. Um, hopefully this will be a, uh, uh, worth your time as we dive deeper. Some of this presentation will be actually quite technical, but I, I, I do believe that uh, it will be useful to you. Um, a bit about the company before we go in. Um, we are a 13-year-old company. Uh, we are a top two global content delivery network. Uh, the other one being uh, Akamai Technologies, which uh, a lot of people know. Um, uh, we are a $100 million plus global company, uh, close to 400 employees around the world. We accelerate over 17,500 web applications and websites globally. We're really focused on accelerating enterprise cloud applications, and we have, uh, as we go further in the slides, a, a, a vast network deployment. Um, some of our biggest differentiators and our, or our biggest strengths are, are in the emerging markets. So China, Russia, Middle East, South America, wherever business, businesses and enterprises are pushing, that's where we are, or pushing even further out to the edge of the, uh, edge of the world. Okay? Our mission um, is really about global cloud acceleration. Um, so it's accelerating uh, uh, the, the Internet, it's accelerating client-server applications, it's accelerating mobile applications. We want the Internet basically to, to be a soft, secure, high-performing application delivery network. So websites used to be very simple and, and kind of static, uh, you know, home pages. They no longer are. Things are very tra uh, dynamic and transaction heavy. Um, obviously, if, in Eric's overview, when he showed the, the different uh, Saxo Trader platforms, that, that, that is truly a, uh, the most transactional, dynamic application that you could ever see. And it comes in multiple flavors like client-server, browser-based, mobile-based. Um, so that's the world that we are accelerating. Uh, we're trusted partners in local markets, so if you're only trying to deliver, let's say, in London or, uh, sorry, in San Jose or, or uh, the East Coast near New York, um, there are benefits there, but um, we're exports on extending into global markets. That's kind of our, our claim to fame. Our network, we have 140 points of presence in 80 cities, and we're constantly growing. So what are these points of presence? Basically, data centers. So a lot of prospects and customers we talk to, um, they have one, two, three um, data centers. Some have many more that they're trying to consolidate. Well, when they use our services in a very kind of simple analogy, they're getting 140 data centers uh, by leveraging our network. Um, um, so you get the same kind of performance, reliability, redundancy as if you were building out 140 data centers of your own. And we'll get more into that when we start diving into the technology. But again, we have a vast network, and um, as you can kind of see in, in the small font there, um, you know, uh, some of the, the biggest areas of presence for us are in the growth markets, uh, um, like China, Russia, Brazil, India, uh, Indonesia, uh, the Middle East, uh, et cetera. And of course, we have uh, a very strong presence in, in the U.S. and in Europe and, and, and everywhere else. Uh, our obligatory customer slide, again, we've been around for 13 years. We have customers in every vertical, every industry. Uh, uh, finance is a big sector for us. Um, uh, everywhere around the globe. Uh, again, that, that focused on uh, dynamic, highly transactional websites, web applications, mobile applications. Uh, that's something that, that we really um, uh, differentiate us. All right, let's talk a bit about the emerging markets. 
obviously you're well versed in this or else you would probably not be at this uh, this webcast you're uh, interested in the emerging markets um, this is the the recent update from Kleiner Perkins uh, Mary Meeker um, she does this periodically again th this chart shows that uh, the emerging markets are is where all the growth is so number one um, in, in growth is China of course uh, over 500 million internet users and just this year um, a 10% year-over-year growth in, in terms of internet penetration, and only 40% of the population has been reached. Um, and uh, she she highlights the U.S. there just to just to give a, a frame of reference. Um, only 3% year-over-year and 78% uh, of popula uh, population penetration. So the attraction to the emerging emer markets are obvious um, when everyone is trying to um, get a competitive edge or find new areas for growth. Um, uh, it, it is, all the growth is in those emerging markets, and that's what uh, our customers are seeing. So from a CD Networks perspective, I will say that 65% of our, our new business is helping companies into growth markets. That's where a lot of the interest is. That's where the, the return on investment, the, the cost savings, the revenue growth is coming from. And we are, we've seen, seen over the course of 2012 a 450% increase in our traffic that we serve over into the emerging market. So um, just like the market data shows, our real-time uh, technical network data confirms that uh, the emerging markets are growing, and that's where our, uh, there are, there's a ton of interest. Uh, this graph is from Forrester. Again, it reiterates the same point. Um, just to describe this S-curve, the, the, the countries on top are the ones where um, uh, the popular uh, internet p p penetration has um, kind of flattened, and the ones at the bottom are where the internet population is still very low. So the key ones uh, from Forrester, and what we should highlight, are the ones that are coming up the slope. So these are the ones that um, have accelerated to the point where they're no, no longer stagnant or uh, have c overcome challenges, and the most of the growth will be coming up from this vertical area. So that includes Mexico, China, Turkey, Brazil, Russia, Italy, Spain, France. Um, so a lot of growth coming out of, out of these regions. All right, let's, so let's get into the, the technology a bit. Um, so what is the problem? Um, in a nutshell, and, and kind of also what Saxo saw and also what all of our other customers see is, uh, around the origin data center, so this is where your application or website or your client server application is hosted, um, you see fast application performance and happy users. So this can be a public application, it can be a private application, but typically right around headquarters or origin uh, or wherever your data center is, you usually get pretty good performance. However, as you go further out to the edges of the globe, um, your remote employees, your customers, your partners, your ve vendors, basically what we call the extended enterprise. You have slower application performance, unhappy users, uh, poor per application performance, and directly translated into, into this market, into the finance and banking sector, is broken trades and lost revenue. Okay? Um, what is the plot problem? A lot of people think that this is a bandwidth problem, that if, if the, the internet had bigger bandwidth, um, then uh, this could be solved. And uh, basically, mathematically and technically, that is not correct. That even if you had infinite bandwidth uh, from, let's say, your origin data center hosted in New York uh, to China, you would still have the, this latency problem. So it really boils down to, to three major things. The first thing is, uh, even though we think the internet is super fast, going the speed of light, um, there, there is still latency. So the examples here are if you're hosted in San Jose, uh, the, the distance, uh, the, the latency to get to New York is about 50 milliseconds, distance to London about 150 milliseconds, and then the, the time to get to Shanghai is 500 milliseconds. So this is just a reality of, of how the speed of light works. Second problem is network problems, so that even in a, if you, in a perfect world, you get those kind of um, uh, times, but the Internet, of course, is a network of networks, and every time that a packet of data or a, a single transaction flows over the Internet, it must cover, go from router to router to network to network, and there is packet loss. There is congestion. There, there are problems that occur. 
And when these problems occur, it completely uh, accentuates or uh, increases the, uh, the time that uh, uh, a transaction takes. Um, and then third, and probably the most important, is inefficient protocol. So basically, all of this traffic flows over TCP. TCP was originally designed and developed in 1973. So in today's world, 40 years later, um, we are using a 40-year-old protocol to base um, our, our transactional, you know, uh, mission-critical enterprise applications and financial applications. And that protocol is incredibly chatty, meaning the, the, the red uh, lines that are showing just set up, just basic communications before any data or payload is, is sent. Uh, tons of back and forth uh, trip just to set up the communication. Um, and so that combined with the first two problems is, is what causes all this congestion. Okay, and how does this prove out? Um, we can show this on, and we've done this for again for countless of customers. That in this particular example, if you have um, a origin in Washington D.C., then your performance in, in uh, surrounding areas like Philadelphia, Atlanta, or Boston are quite good. But as the farther you get away, uh, the worse performance gets. So uh, websites go slower, as well as trades go slower. Okay, and you'll see all the way at the right hand side, of course, is uh, India, Bangalore, and then Beijing. So 50 times slower than what you would expect um, uh, from an end user performance in, in Washington, D.C. Okay. So th that's, that's the, the real life of it. So a, a bit about more about latency. Um, uh, in this particular thing, again, shows if you're hosted in New York, New York City, then you have a latency to end users in New York of two milliseconds. So of course, very fast. Um, but again, the farther you get away, when you get to, to Washington State or California, that, that latency increases, which again uh, causes um, uh, your trades and your financial transactions, as well as your other transactions, to, to slow down. And that's just in the U.S. So let's take a look at, and a lot of interest was in China, so let's take a look at China. So measuring that same type of thing from a origin data center in Beijing, um, when, when you go out to even just the surrounding countries like Japan or Malaysia or India, you're seeing you know, 100, 200, 300 milliseconds. And then if you want to get to the U.S., it's 500 milliseconds. Okay? So that's basically half a second, and that's under normal circumstances. If you have more packet loss or uh, it's, a, it's a poor Internet day, that could shoot up. Um, and, of course, this, you know, in our you know, uh, low latency, high volume transaction kind of trading environment, um, half a second is a big deal. Another example, um, again highlighting the fact, this is a, a cool looking um, 3D graph that we put together. Um, again, we are one, CD Networks is one of the only CDNs with presence in Russia. Um, so on the bottom hand side is a list of data centers or POPs that we have in Russia, and on the right hand side, our networks to uh, other cities around the globe. And uh, what this shows is packet loss. So basically, this is an unusually uh, tough day in Russia. Um, there is a possibility that 10% of packets get lost in Russia coming out from one of their, one of their locations. Um, just as a, uh, a relative point, in the US, if a network is experiencing 1% packet loss, that is considered incredibly bad. But in the emerging markets, you know, 3, 3%, 5%, 10% packet loss is quite common. And so, um, again, trying to work in these uh, environments requires a more uh, a technical solution to, to get around these problems. Then uh, another problem, again, adding on more problems, is the, the Chinese uh, firewall. Um, so you'll see here that what we did is we ran a, a, a single object, a 64 kilobyte object, and we tested from within China and, without, and, and from outside of China. Okay? So nothing different except for those uh, constraints. And it's 50% slower. So um, basically, the Great Firewall also, because of its different rules uh, that it, it has put into place, slows down um, you know, transactions and slows down content. So I've kind of gone through the, the list of litany of different problems. 
how do people solve these, and what are the problems with other solutions? I will say, hands down, the, the, the majority of prospects and customers we talk to, um, they are doing this, this solution number one, which is uh, add more data centers, add more colo, add more, you know, so if they have a performance pro problem in China, let's go ahead and build out a data center in Beijing or Hong Kong, and we'll do the same thing in India. Uh, unfortunately, so th that seems like a logical solution to try to get close to end users, but it's expensive, it's complex, you have to sync your data and your applications between all the different locations, and it doesn't solve the performance problem. So take uh, China again. So putting a data center just in Beijing is not enough. Um, we showed you before that inside China even, uh, the, the latency uh, within country is very poor. So you would need the equivalent of, of what we have, which is 25 points of presence and growing within China to solve the performance problem. So a lot of customers, again, initially come to us and say, you know, let's, you know, our, our, our initial idea is to just set up a co-location facility uh, in China. We show them performance results and show that it, that will not solve the problem. Same thing goes for Russia. The same thing goes for South America, um, uh, India. So all of the emerging markets, a single data center, even two data centers in that location aren't enough. Uh, some people try to do hardware appliances, so buying a riverbed, a blue coat, a Cisco box to do one-way acceleration or you know point-to-point uh, -point acceleration between branch offices. Um, that is a common solution. Unfortunately, it doesn't solve the internet congestion problem that we've been talking about. Furthermore, uh, a binaural solution where you put hardware on, on either end uh, may be fine for branch offices, but it doesn't work for remote end users. If you have uh, traders or, or uh, uh, customers or clients from all over the globe, you can't put a box everywhere. Well, unfortunately, actually you can, it's kind of what we've, we've done. Um, and then point three, a lot of people, um, again, the CDN market has been around for more than a decade. Um, they approach CDNs. Traditional CDNs, what they're very focused on is caching. Um, so storing uh, media or pictures or, or objects near end users. Um, Unfortunately, for uh, dynamic transactions, caching doesn't work. So a lot of people, uh, we have to educate on the fact that what we offer is not a, a content delivery network per se. It's, it's the, the fact of accelerating dynamic uh, transactions through, through our network. Okay. So let's dive a bit into our solution. Um, what we've done for, again, countless customers is uh, relating to our, the, the, the slide before. So around the origin data center, users are happy, but also now by leveraging our 140 points of presence around the globe and our vast network and our technology, um, end users, regardless of where they're coming from, receive almost the same fast uh, application performance um, and uh, uh, ultimately trades go through and, and revenue increases. So how do we do this? Um, but, Diving back into the technology, we've already talked about the problems, the, the uh, latency problem, the network problem, the packet loss, um, and then the, the problem with TCP. What we basically do is, between our 140 points of presence, we've created a next generation internet protocol, if you can think of it that way. Um, and what we do is minimize all of the back and forth that's caused by uh, TCP, and we have maximized uh, data throughput between our networks. Um, so the left-hand side shows a bunch of different features that, uh, that we do, but basically in a nutshell what we're doing is making a you know, next-gen internet protocol over our network. Okay? Furthermore, we route around issues. So if there are packet loss issues between this network and that network, we may take a longer route uh, around the internet, but a more faster route to get your trades through. Okay? So what does this translate into? So here is an actual, and Gomez is a third-party performance measurement tool. Um, we took a, a, a 40 k kilobit object just to, just to highlight the difference. It was taking, say, 490 milliseconds from a, a variety of different agents. Once uh, that object started getting accelerated to, to uh, over our network, it dropped to 68 milliseconds. So basically a 621% improvement uh, of what uh, you know, of what, what they were seeing. So all of this technology translates into faster uh, trades, faster uh, packets going through our network, 
and of course, again, uh, more revenue. So a bit more about Saxo and, and the case study uh, that, that Eric talked about. Um, Saxo's technology, again, is fantastic. They're, they're, the client-server browser-based mobile applications are uh, probably some of the best out there in the market. Um, but they wanted a partner that knew, knows the Internet uh, and knows how the Internet uh, works and, and to accelerate that. Um, so they were seeing significant great transaction times within, within Europe and their, uh, when their origin data centers were, but specifically in China, um, there were broken trades were costing uh, uh, loss in revenue. And of course, unhappy customers and partners were, were the result. So um, Saxo partnered with CD Networks, and uh, we, we work with them to accelerate all of their different flavors of application. Um, we focused on our uh, dynamic acceleration technologies in China. We also supported them in getting the appropriate licensing and regulations to um, get through the Great Firewall. Um, and uh, um, once they were alive with our system, um, basically the broken trades were, uh, uh, were minimized and, uh, and eliminated and, and again translated into, into, uh, into revenue for them. So again, we're working with Saxo to expand to other uh, emerging market regions um, uh, and uh, that's basically the, the partnership that, uh, that we were able to do with them from uh, both a business and technology perspective. Okay. So that concludes uh, uh, the, the slide presentation, so we can kind of turn it over for uh, Q&A time. Mike, over to you for uh, questions and answers. Great, thank you. Uh, thanks, Jeff. That was very interesting, and uh, we does bring us now to the promised uh, Q&A section session. So let's uh, let's dig into that. Uh, okay, so we've got a couple good ones in here already. Let me let me throw the first one here to you, Jeff, if you don't mind. I know you've been talking, but take a breath, and here we go. Uh, approximately, what are both the cost and performance differences in my company co-locating in Hong Kong? or near China compared to using a CDN with presence in China? Uh, fantastic question. Um, actually, this is one of the most common questions that we, we see from prospects. Um, a lot of uh, customers or prospects come to us, and again, uh, they come with the solution of, uh, of thinking of building out a co-location facility or expanding the data center, because that's the simplest thing to understand. Unfortunately, um, while Putting up a data center in Hong Kong um, is, uh, is, is somewhat easy. Um, that doesn't solve the problem. A couple of reasons. Number one, Hong Kong is still outside of mainland China. It, all transactions, all content, all internet traffic still must flow through the Great Firewall. We've already talked about the Great Firewall um, uh, slowing down transactions as well. And even if it didn't, um, China's Internet topography and how the internet is, is uh, you know linked up there um, is very poor. A single data center doesn't solve it. So uh, you're still seeing you know you can still see two three hundred milliseconds uh, across China. Um, furthermore, we we have some customers that are putting uh, thinking of putting data centers within mainland China. So even as going as far as putting two, so let's say putting up a data center in in Beijing and then Shanghai. Again, the same thing applies. Now, you get the benefit that you're inside the Great Firewall, so you're not, um, uh, you don't experience the latency there, um, but two data centers are still not enough um, because of how uh, the poor internet peering and, 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 and transit uh, there. Um, that will still not get you the performance that, that you require. Also, uh, for a non-Chinese uh, uh, company, uh, getting a data center space within mainline China requires uh, even more uh, licenses and regulations that is very difficult for um, uh, a, uh, an American or a European company um, to get. So um, it's, it's not even cost prohibitive. It's almost uh, it's, it's very difficult for, for, uh, for you to go, go uh, a U.S. company to, again, set up a data center or a colo facility within China. Great. Thank you. Thank you for that, Jeff. And... Let's see here. Another question that's come in, also for you, Jeff. Let me uh, keep you on the spot. Out of all these emerging markets that you mentioned, which has the highest demand for a trading platform? 
Sure. Again, again, an excellent question. Of course, number one squarely is China because of all the growth and activity and the expansion. Um, I, I will say that uh, of late, uh, both Brazil and India um, are also picking up. There's a lot of interest now. Um, you know, you can go and read the, the same kind of uh, business and economist uh, trade magazines and news sites that, as well. Um, a lot of folks are trying to plan for the if there's a cool down in China, what is the next one? And a lot of folks are still uh, thinking about Brazil and India as the next. And then also Russia um, is is starting to ramp up as well. So um, right now, uh, squarely it's it's China, um, but uh, the the other growth markets are not far uh, not far behind. Great, thank you. Um, and there's another question here of. What in is what in is, what is an example of dynamic content that can be accelerated? Sure, uh, I'll take that one as well. Uh, dynamic content, uh, specifically in the uh, financial uh, and trading uh, space, of course, it, uh, are personalized direct trades, uh, things that aren't cached. And caching typically means uh, you know uh, pictures and logos or, or even videos that many multiple people see. Uh, a dynamic uh, uh, application. Uh, I'm sorry. Dynamic trade or dynamic element is something that is personalized one to one, and of course, uh, trades are, uh, are of this nature. Um, so typically, you, again, like I mentioned before, a lot of people think of CDNs as caching. Um, this has nothing to do with caching. It's about getting a packet of data from one place to another as fast as possible, and it's kind of what the services that we we offer. Excellent. Thank you. And that, uh, we've gotten to our questions from the audience, and I think uh, sort of in the, in the spirit of, uh, of honoring, uh, honoring everyone's time, we will perhaps give back about uh, 15 minutes of folks' day today. Um, I would like to thank you, Jeff and Eric, both for your time today. It's been very interesting. And of course, thank you, uh, everyone in the audience, uh, for being here. You, of course, make it, uh, make it possible. And uh, thank you for, for taking some time out of your day. I'd also like to let everyone know that, that uh, all, of, all the uh, audience members know that, that we will be sending out an email uh, to you with a link to this presentation that you can then um, you know, view at your leisure. And we encourage you to do that. And with that, I think I will wrap it up. I wish everyone a very good afternoon. Uh, and I hope you will join us again very soon.